I'm Esther with Red Dog Blue Cat, and this is Sarah. Hello. I'm the salesperson at Red Dog Blue Cat, and Sarah is our fabulous pet nutrition specialist and a homeopath. And today we're going to talk to you about the three biggest myths in raw food. So Sarah, take it away. What are those myths? And tell us all about them. Okay, so uh, all of you guys out there have probably heard these before. Uh, I decided to pick these ones because these are the ones I hear the most frequently and they drive me crazy. So <laughs> I really want to kind of debunk them and uh, put them in the right light so you um, can really feel comfortable that you can explain raw food uh, to someone new who's kind of scared and make them feel more comfortable with the idea of feeding fresh food so we can help more pets. So myth number one. So the first myth is that you're going to make your pets sick if you feed raw. So I've heard this from veterinarians, I've heard it from pet owners, I've heard it from uh, even the Health Canada and the FDA in the States. They're always on about this pathogenic bacteria, so Salmonella, E. coli, Listeria, there's some other ones as well. And that is a valid concern if you are not getting your food from a reliable source. So I don't even recommend getting your foods from a butcher or a grocery store where the idea is that the food is going to be taken home and it's going to be cooked. So the, the food safety standards are not the same. So what we do in the facility here is uh, after a year of prepping, we applied for something called HACCP, which is a specialized food safety program that is for human grade facilities. Um, and so it's optional for us because there aren't any regulations for Canadian raw pet food companies to do any of these things. So it's a really great way to make sure that we're meeting all those standards and keeping everyone safe, including our staff and down to the animals that are eating it outside of our warehouse. So if you can, you should purchase your pet food your raw pet food from a HACCP verified facility. There are a few in Canada. I think there are three and we're one of those. And uh, I believe we're the only one on the West Coast that has it. So, yay. So that's a major factor in making sure that you're not uh, introducing pathogenic bacteria in a large amount into your home. The other part that I wanted to mention is that Everyone has bacteria living all around them all the time. So we all have E. coli in our guts. Oh no. And we all have E. coli and listeria all around us, inside us. So in some terms, these bacteria are actually part of our microbiome. It's when they get to be in too large quantities that they become a problem. So uh, that's why we really believe a lot in uh, making sure that your pet's gut is also healthy and their immune system is healthy. And if you have a pet that has a, a um, compromised gut, then you may have to cook the food at the beginning just to make way for their gut to heal. And then you can start to switch them onto the raw food diet. So there are a number of different ways to approach it so that even the most sensitive pets can um, eventually go onto a fresh food diet. And um, I, I pretty much can always find a way. <laughs> so uh, don't be afraid of bacteria. Bacteria are good, they're healthy. Um, we don't wanna kill them all. And it's just how we handle our food and, and making sure that we're aware of, of what we're doing and where we're processing and handling things. Awesome. And myth number two is? Myth number two is that there's no such thing as a balanced and complete fresh food diet. Mm -hmm. So uh, in order to feed your pets, uh, a lot of people believe that you have to add synthetic premixes in order for your pet to get all the nutrients that they require, uh, which is not true. <laughs> and if you think about it on our terms, we, we may take things uh, specifically if we have some kind of deficiency, 
most of the time our deficiencies are either because we're eating poorly, we're eating a lot of processed foods, we're eating, we're not exercising properly, our guts aren't healthy, we're not absorbing things properly. So we may have to um, adjust our diet and also our um, vitamins that we take specifically for ourselves. But a lot of times the most nutritious way to do that is to get it through food. So uh, through eating lots of fresh veggies, fresh fruits, and making sure we have lots of diversity in our diet. So if you think about that in terms of pets, um, the pet food industry is the only industry that is saying that processed foods are better than fresh food. And if we think about that from our point of view, if, if we were to eat that way all the time, we would not be feeling very good. And we would probably have nutritional deficiencies despite the, the extra vitamins and minerals that are added. So, and that might be because um, our guts become so unhealthy that we can't even absorb the things that we need. So it's really important to make sure that we're feeding fresh food so that we can create a healthy gut so that the gut can get what it needs and um, so you can get that stuff to your bloodstream. So that's one really important aspect. And then the other one is that um, synthetic vitamins and minerals are not the same as minerals and vitamins that come from food. So they don't even look the same under a microscope. So if you're, if you're giving a lot of uh, synthetics, you're actually kind of cheating your animal because they don't have access to different types of these nutrients and um, they're, they're totally missing out on certain, certain things that are not even recognized by the AFCO, which is the American Feed Association. And they're kind of the ones that say what is required and um, in what minimum they have to be in the food. So we don't really look at minimums. We, we use them as a baseline, but we want optimal nutrition. We don't want minimal, the, the least, before they get a nutritional deficiency. Awesome. And one of the things I know you've been involved in helping create some of the formulas for Red Dog. We have 11 different options for single source protein meals for dogs and nine options for cats. And I know that the formulas are very different for dogs and cats. And my understanding is for the cat formulas, being obligate carnivores that they are, it's only two to 3% veg, veggies. And with the dog formulas, it's 15 to 20% veg, depending on the formula. Yeah. And, and my understanding also is that there is a balance between muscle meat, fat, organ, and bone as well in that. And those are very carefully combined to make each meal complete and balanced, but it's based on the idea of rotating between red meats, white meats, and fish. And that's with uh, Red Dog Blue Cat single source proteins. We also have three products called the No Frills Economy line where the veggies are not organic, unlike in the other line, and it's mixed source protein. There's chicken and beef, there's beef and salmon, and there's pork, fish, and turkey. So again, we still recommend rotation between those three or between those and some other single source proteins because complete and balanced really does involve a rotation. Do you want to comment any more on that or is that? Yeah, better? actually the, the no frills line, they are complete and balanced in oh, terms of APCO. Okay. All three of those okay. for dogs, they're all complete and balanced by APCO standards, which is pretty cool. There are awesome. two minerals that we add, I believe it's selenium and zinc. Um, other than that, everything comes from food. So that's pretty awesome. The uh, Red Dog line is more designed to use for uh, rotation. So there's several different proteins. They have several different veggies in them, um, different organs. Some have spleen, some have tongue, some have kidney, some have heart. So that if you're rotating them, you're getting more diversity in their diet. Uh, and for animals that can only be on one protein or a few proteins because they have allergies mm -hmm. uh, or gut related issues, then um, we do have customized services that you can use to make sure that it's still balanced and complete, um, even if you can only use one protein. Awesome, thank you. Yeah. And now myth number three, that is? 
Yeah, the last one is that there's uh, no research about raw and whether or not it's actually more beneficial than feeding dry food. So um, I first like to comment on the fact that if we were really to think about that for us, um, we don't need research to tell us that we should be eating fresh food. <laughs> so um, that's kind of the first thing that I try to mention. <laughs> and then uh, the next part is that, yes, there, there was very little research before, um, but now there's, there's a lot of research coming out. And um, one of the really important things to remember is when you're, you're looking for research on pet food, you want to try and find research that is not done by pet food companies. You want to try and find research that's done by independent uh, sources. So through a university, through um, someone doing their PhD, uh, or someone other than a pet food company, because they, they, there's always a vested interest and there's money going into it because they're a pet food company. So it's really important to remember that when you look at studies, that's what you want to primarily look for and you also want to see longer term studies. So a lot of studies on pet foods are done in very, very short periods of time with very young animals. So they may be done over a four month period with, you know, less than one year old or a one year old dog, which is already very healthy and thriving. They can kind of compensate at that age for crappy food. So if you see a long term study where the animals are going 10, 15 years on on a diet and they're still doing well, even their blood work says they're doing well, um, that's where you wanna look. You wanna look for longevity studies. There are a few of them out there now and there's a lot more very specific studies coming out of Finland and uh, the US and also in Canada uh, showing that raw food is absolutely by far the most healthy thing you can feed them. <laughs> Awesome. And as a vendor, whenever you go to place an order or whoever in your company goes to place an order, at the top right hand side of the screen, it says price list and other downloads. And we have compiled a list of some of the research that's going on in the world right now and has been for years. There are at least 10 to 15 different studies on there that you can go and look at or that you can post and share on your social media sites or you can post on your website or tell your customers about. So please feel free to go download that and have a look. And of course, if you ever have any questions about any of these, you can call Sarah or reach out to her by email, Sarah, S-A-R-A-H at red dog blue cat with a K dot com. Or if you have any sales questions, I'm Esther, Esther, E-S-T-H-E-R at red dog blue cat with a K dot com. Thanks for being with us today. Bye.